October 17th, Google deployed the final preview build of Android L and it came out with the name Android Lollipop and version 5.0. Today we are gonna see what's up with the new Android Lollipop. The boot screen has changed, it looks pretty sweet. The welcome screen is so beautiful with a two tone glaze. The setup has all the elements of material design that Google was making since so long. I'm just gonna skip through the setup and do the things that are necessary so that I can reach the main screen. Let's go do it. Let's see what Google has presented us in this version of Android. The UI is super smooth and everything flows when you just move here and there for the first time. The menu opens up and goes back to the very menu icon it came from. Everything looks so managed and maintained. The animations are really beautiful. The notification bar looks different. Let's go and check out the dialog. Now with the first look you can tell a lot has changed under the hood. Everything looks different. The dialer is all blue and white with the same color picks as in KitKat. The dialer button is beautiful and is the first material element you're probably gonna see. The way dialer brings up and that green call button grows in size, it all looks so perfect. Tabs have been categorized nicely as speed dial recents and contacts. The call settings are all same. The contacts have a circular color ID face and has some indentation from the left. The buttons give a ripple effect on being pressed and give a sense of satisfaction. Now as you can see, incoming calls from the top, if you're busy with something, that's what the Google calls the non-intrusive call function. It helps in keeping you undisturbed with whatever you're doing. And that my friends is how the new contact looks. It's all sorted and has smooth transitions. Now let's lock the screen and see how a call looks like. This is new and has the menu above, same as the dialog. Now let's talk about notifications. This is a lock screen notification and it's a new feature in the Android Lollipop. Google has finally added a clear notification button and it's on the bottom of the notifications. The status bar is totally revamped and now has everything you need. Now let me show you the first new feature. It's a notification handler. If you hold on a notification, then this menu comes up. You can block notifications from an app, reduce or increase the priority and choose if notification is displayed on lock screen. Now talking about the status bar, the brightness bar has been added as a shortcut and provides good functionality. The touch and hold trend is now changed by two zones of touch around each shortcut. Touching the icon basically turns the feature on or off. Touching on the name below opens up a detailed menu but it opens up in the status bar only unlike KitKat. Touching on the carrier shows use data and gives you an option to turn data on or off. Data usage has been divided into tabs for a better view and understanding. One more thing that is added in the Lollipop is the fully functional multi-user support. Now you can let your friends, family members share your personal device without granting them access to your personal data via this feature. You can switch to an account anytime you want and it's actually helpful in maintaining privacy. Now let's check out the battery stuff. The battery can now be accessed straight through the battery icon in the status bar which is new in this Android version. The battery stats show the detailed usage of battery consumption and even tell you how much time you're probably left according to the current usage. With Android Lollipop, Google introduced a project Volta, which is supposed to increase the battery life by 90 minutes. I've now been using this since 2 days and I can actually feel increased time. There's a battery saver option embedded in this build too, which helps you save battery by hibernating unnecessary things and limiting the process speed that directly impacts the battery. Turning it on turns the status bar and the navigation bar orange. You can even set up it to turn on automatically on a fixed percentage battery drop. Now let's go and find out some more about Android. Google has finally broken the naming mystery and named it Lollipop. The Android version 5.0. Rumors. Let's see the easter egg now. The easter egg is a glossy lollipop and hey it's a game. Google's come up with a game and this time this is like Flappy Birds or we might even call it Flappy Android or something. It's cool you really need to try this stuff. This build goes with LPX13D. So there's nothing new in developer options I checked, but yeah, there's one hidden thing I should call it 
a new thing I guess. Let's go and see that. Now this is Android Beam. It was there in previous versions of Android 2, but the native feature didn't have any app to handle the Beam request and was not as good as this and you had to use a third party software like Super Beam or something. Now you can beam anything you like if another phone has an NFC and then it's only a matter of time. Now Google has changed a little as I see. The menu has shifted to the top left side and is a part of the search bar. The menu looks same but opens up more like the new play store. The keyboard looks different from what we saw in the new developer preview. That was grayish in color whereas this is a little bit wide but has the same material feel to it and feels super smooth. And now here's the third hidden thing, it is the increased emoji support. Google has increased the emojis that were there in the earlier versions of Android. Music and games hasn't changed till now but might get a material update somewhere near future. You know what's actually beautiful how everything flows so smoothly in this Android? Now let's go to accessibility for something more. They now have included the invert colors option which was previously missing and it helps people who are either colorblind or have difficulty in watching things along with color correction support too. Automatic brightness has been renamed to adaptive brightness and does the same work but I feel it somehow works better than before. Even a shortcut for inverted colors come up in the status bar once you see that. That's intelligent. It also has added support for casting your screen on nearby wireless devices. The data usage even shows the data consumption for specific users and helps you maintain control of your data consumption. Now there's one more change. In the apps, it now shows full detailed RAM usage. It shows the system occupied, user occupied and free space available and gives you a sense of control over all the RAM. One of the most beautiful things is a recent menu. It really helps you see where you left it. The apps can be closed by swiping them left or right and can be opened by touching once. The whole recent thing feels really smooth and does not feel laggy at all. The widgets have changed a bit and now possess a greyish background as to transparent in the earlier versions of Android. Even the file picker or the application selector has changed and now it's material design compliant. It shows a menu that raises from bottoms and shows the supported apps for that purpose and the option to choose it for once and not always. Now the kernel in this version of Android is SE Linux which stands for Security Enhanced Linux and has some added security at the kernel level. There were rumors that there might be an update to the kernel to a possible 3.8 or 3.10 but till now it remains the same as in KitKat. Talking about the security, there is one more interesting hidden feature in this build and it's called Smart Lock. It helps you pair your Android phone with any Android Wear device and authorizes that device to unlock your phone. It's a very good feature and really comes handy as I see it. You can authorize any device to unlock the phone for your smartwatches, NFC tags and all that stuff. There's one more feature, it's called Screen Pinning. It helps pin a screen when you're currently working on and it works best with the multi-user interface. The sound and notification icons are same but the sound quick access is all new. You can now select the ringer according to the need or priority or any amount of time you want it to sit. That's all for the day guys. If you like the video hit the thumbs up, share it with people whom it may help, subscribe my channel for more information about the latest tech news. This is Kronostek signing off. Thank you.